What's up, Joe? What's up, everybody? Another Boston sports team is vying for a championship. The Red Sox won the last World Series. The Patriots won the last Super Bowl. And now the Bruins are in the Stanley Cup Finals. Their opponent is the St. Louis Blues, a team that has made several finals appearances in their history, but has yet to win a single finals game. Will that change? Will St. Louis pull the upset? Or will they be celebrating yet another championship in Beantown? Our man Ryan Lake is on his post, and he joins us to share his views on all of this right here on Sports 360. Well, joining us today, once again on Sports 360, is our hockey expert, Ryan Lake. Ryan, how are how you doing today? I'm doing great, Jeff. Uh, thanks for having me back. <clears throat> yeah, I'm glad to have you back. And we have you here to talk today about the upcoming Stanley Cup Finals uh, between the Boston Bruins and the St. Louis Blues. Series kicks off on Monday, Memorial Day. And uh, we want to get into all of that in in a few moments. Um, And, and you know, Ryan, for uh, those who have been following along with us as we've worked our way through the Stanley Cup playoffs, they may be wondering what happened to us in uh, in regards to the conference finals. Um, And Ryan, in full transparency, we'll let everyone know that we actually did sit for an interview but due to some technical difficulties, we were unable to air that podcast. But Ryan, I'm sure you would agree it was the best podcast that nobody ever heard. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, we, we were talking some good stuff on that one. It would have won some words. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about it. No doubt. Um, so, but here we are now, and we're going to talk about the the finals. Uh, and in doing so, though, uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll touch upon the play in the conference finals. So um, some of the things that we actually did talk about, um, we can touch upon them here. But um, just overall, uh, giving an overview, a brief overview of the coming series, um, how, how do you view this matchup between Boston and St. Louis? First of all, are these the two teams that coming into the Stanley Cup playoffs you thought would be the last two teams standing? No, you know, I think a lot of people are surprised that Boston is in this position, especially before the playoffs started with Tampa being there on their in their end of the bracket. So if Boston was to get to this point, everyone thought they would have to go through Tampa Bay. Uh, they got a break with Columbus taking them out in four games. Um, which really surprised everybody and, and it made for the path a little bit easier for the, the Bruins. Um, you know, it still wasn't an easy path for them to get here, but the, the similarity between the Bruins and the Blues is they kept their best hockey uh, for these last couple of months in, in the playoffs. Uh, you know, the Blues had a very difficult route. I <clears throat> first saw them game past the first round, but they're kind of stumbling in the second or third round. Uh, while it's not completely unsurprising that they're here because they they were the best team since January. Um, you know, the, before January, they, they were the worst team. So you, you just really didn't know what you're going to get. They're pretty inexperienced. Uh, but both these teams have played, you know, above and beyond expectations. And I think it's, it's going to be a really hard hitting, exciting, um, maybe not the fastest finals, but it's going to be, you know, a bruising finals with, with a lot of big, heavy teams, uh, players on these teams going against each other. And, and before getting into the matchup, why don't we talk a little bit about how both of these teams got here? Uh, the Bruins got here by a sweep um, of Carolina and um, St. Louis uh, won in six games over San Jose. So um, just talk a little bit about how both of these teams got here. Some of the play, some of the, you know, some of the things that you saw in the conference finals. Yeah, well, if we start in the East with Boston and Carolina, you know, I really thought going into that series that that was going to be a long, hard uh, series. Seven games is what I predicted. Um, 
Boston really was able to shut down Carolina. You know, they, Carolina really never found their game. Um, there was they would have a period or two throughout the series. But they they couldn't really put a couple of periods together against the Bruins. You know, Tuukka Rask, the goaltender for Boston, is playing at his 2014 rate when he won the Vezina Trophy as the best goaltender in the league. He's really been able to control games, uh, and the size of the of the Bruins was really just too much for the small, quick Carolina team. And and one thing we talked about uh, in the greatest podcast that never aired was uh, how layoff has really affected these teams that have swept. So you know, Carolina swept the Islanders, had a long rest, waiting for for Boston, uh, and, and we're really never able to get their intensity level back up. Uh, you know, that also happened um, with the Columbus Blue Jackets after they swept Tampa Bay. They played Boston after a long layoff and rest. And Boston, you know, just had c- completed a seven-game series against Toronto. Their intensity level was up. Uh, and it, it was just too much for Columbus to, to match. Uh, Columbus did for six games, which gave Carolina a little bit longer of a break. Um but again, the intensity level gap was there. And now Boston is in, you know, the reverse position going into this series where they've been off for over 10 days now, uh, just waiting, um, not playing playoff hockey. And, and it will be interesting to see how they're able to raise their uh, intensity level and, and their mental game up to get ready for this series. The thing that they have going for them that a lot of the other teams that were in this position don't is uh, you know, they have a vast experience. Uh, they won the cup in 2011 and they have five guys from that team that are still on, on the club. And then they got to the finals in 2013, ultimately losing, uh, in, in that, that series. But, you know, they, they have that experience and they're probably the, they're clearly more experienced than, uh, the Blues and they're probably one of the most experienced teams entering into the playoffs this year. Uh, um, yeah. And, and mine just just on that point i mean you know uh, um on on the rest um because i mean you make a good point and we've talked about this a couple of times um and it it has to be really difficult right cuz there no, no, no matter what you do in practice um you can't really simulate you can't possibly simulate you know the intensity of of gameplay especially playoff gameplay so, you know, um, you know, I hear what you're saying in terms of Boston being experienced and, and certainly from perhaps a mental standpoint um, and, you know, from their, uh, the perspective of their experience, they should be better suited than some of the other teams that came off sweeps. But there is that physical element. And I think we got to wait and see how that plays out. Yeah. Yeah. You- you never know how the body's going to react and all those players that, you know, have that experience are, are you know, that was back older. in 2011, 2013. So they're, they're quite yeah. a bit older now. Right. Right. And exactly. Because Dano Chara, you know, he's, he's 42. Um, and so you have no idea how his body's going to respond. Uh, you know, it would just be interesting to see how, you know, these much younger blues are able to go into Boston in that first game. And, and you really see that layoff in those, those first two games. Right. Okay. And and talk a little bit then about um the Blues and, and, and San Jose and, and and the Blues and their performance in getting to the Stanley Cup finals. Yeah, the the Blues versus the Sharks was, you know, a primed for a seven game series going into it. The Sharks going into that series had played the most hockey out of anybody uh in the playoffs. They went to game seven in the first round against Vegas. And then game seven again in the second round against Colorado. Uh, you know, so they, they had played a lot of hockey going into it. The Blues had played, uh, you know, a decent number of games. It played six games against Winnipeg uh, and then seven games against Dallas to get into the, to the conference finals. So they, they weren't, they didn't have that layoff issue uh, that we saw in the East. The teams really matched up very well. Uh, you know, the first two games were split. San Jose winning the first game and then and the Blues coming back. Game three was a pivotal game where uh, there was controversy in an overtime. Uh, the Blues were up going into the third period. They they blew a lead, allowed the Sharks to get back in. And then in overtime, there was uh, a no call on a hand pass that gave game three to the Sharks, um, gave them a two to one lead in the series. 
And a lot of people really thought that was going to be the ch- the turning point that really tilted the series in favor of the Sharks. But impressive, impressively, the Blues, you know, really use that as a rallying cry, uh, and they didn't lose another game in the series. Uh, they, Jordan Bennington, the, their impressive rookie goaltender, you know, only allowed two goals in the last three games, uh, which is, you know, if you're not scoring, you're not winning. And the Blues, top and from from top to bottom on their lineup, really outperformed and outclassed the Sharks in those last three games in the series. The Sharks were dealing with injuries. Joe Pavelski, uh, again, was out. He had been hurt multiple times this, this offseason. They also lost their best defenseman in Eric Carlson. And um, they they missed three of their top uh, players in the game in game six, which w- really wasn't a very competitive game and, and was the clincher for the Blues. And so the Blues, you know, are, were playing – probably the best hockey they've even played in the playoffs and and their playoff hockey is better than the regular season hockey, uh, which is impressive, especially since January, they've been the best team in the league uh, and, and went from the worst team in the, in the standings to becoming the second best team in, in their conference. Or division, right. I say. right. And uh, before we, before we uh, turn our attention to the finals, um, I'd like <laughs> to get your thoughts on, you know, the controversy around San Jose, because you and I have joked a little bit offline concerning uh, your theory, because, I mean, San Jose, you talked about the hand pass um, in game three of the series with St. Louis, but there were also some other controversies along the way. And, um, you know, San Jose nevertheless got knocked knocked out, but, um, and and we don't necessarily have to talk about in particular San Jose because after all they're not here. But I mean, what what are your thoughts on the league after the fact? You know, making statements about calls being missed, calls that should have been made, calls that should not have been made, um, that ended up being, you know, deciders in 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 the game. I mean. You know, we talked about that a little bit in the past, but is what's from your perspective? What what's the what's to be gained from that, if anything? Um, you know, uh, when the league comes out after the fact and says, "You know what, that penalty shouldn't have been called, or that penalty should have been called," does that help, or does that just simply fuel more of the controversy? You know, I think it's. It, it's definitely not I- ideal, and I think the uh, the referee situation in the playoffs has been so awful in every series that the league, you know, kind of has to recognize uh, that there has has been issues. Um, I, I think the time and timing of it would have been better suited for after the playoffs, and and for them to you know come to the table and present ways to find solutions to these issues whether it be an additional replay, uh, adding, uh, you know, an extra coaches challenge, whatever, whatever the solution would, would be. But I think coming out the day after or the day of the call, you know, one loses confidence in the refs moving forward, which I don't think uh, helps the refs out. And I think probably makes them second guess themselves, which has led to a couple controversial calls and, and really uh, had a detrimental effect on the the experience of watching the game, uh, and I, you know, from the from a player and club perspective, having the league come out and say, you know, we got that one wrong, but we're not. There's nothing we can do about it. I, I don't think it's helpful at all. At all. And I think it it, um, in some ways, has fueled some of these conspiracy theories about the league favoring one team over the other. Um, you know, the, the fact that three controversial calls uh, in three series all went to the Sharks. Um, and the Sharks have, you know, Joe Thornton, who's this Hall, future Hall of Famer player. Um, he was traded from Boston to San Jose, and it looked like it was going to be a San Jose-Boston matchup in the finals, and it's going to be this huge, huge storyline. Um, and then having the league come out and say, you know, we got the Vegas call wrong. Uh, we got the hand pass wrong, uh, all, all in favor of, of the Sharks. Uh, and then there was also controversy in the Colorado series on an offside play. The league did not come out one way or the other on that one, which I think was 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 helpful. 
um, in, in making it less controversial, where if the league had come out and say, you know, that wasn't outside, then uh, the Avalanche lost that game in game seven, where that call happened, I think the controversy would be even bigger than it was in the Vegas series, uh, where there was, you know, a cross-checking uh, play against uh, Joe Pavelski of the Sharks. He ended up hurting his head. Uh, there was a five-minute major called, and a player on the Vegas Knights was kicked out, which allowed the Sharks to score four goals in five minutes um and and win that game seven in overtime and then the league immediately came out saying you know that wasn't a penalty there there should not have been a call on that play and that just threw fuel fuel on the fire which uh you know if they had waited until after the season and said you know there was some missed calls and and we're trying to correct those in the future i think that probably be, would have been the better approach um you know, they've, they've kind of set a standard now wherever every time they see a wrong call that they're, they're going to own it. Uh, and so hopefully they, you know, hopefully there's not any controversy in this in this finals and we just have a, a clean, clean series. But, you know, every series that we've had so far this year, there seems to be controversy around the refing, uh, no calls or bad calls, Yeah, which is not good for the game. No. And, you know, uh, and. If- you know, sometimes I'm like everyone else where, you know, you, you might criticize the referee, the umpire, uh, and so on. But um, at the same time, we have to acknowledge they have a pretty tough job, you know, because players in all sports t- these days are bigger, faster, and stronger. And technology is able to zoom in and uncover mistakes in ways where, you know, 15, 20 years ago, we couldn't do it. So I think the combination of, of those two factors um, really places the high, you know, places us the spotlight on, on referees and officials and umpires in ways where their performance is more apt for criticism than perhaps in the past. I'm not trying to give them a free pass or anything like that, but it is a tough job. And I'm with you. Hopefully, uh, as we go into the finals, um, we'll avoid the controversy. But let's turn to the finals, Ryan, and and talk about the play um, and what we should expect in this series between the Blues and the Bruins. Um, Give us your take. I think they're really similar teams. Uh, you know, they're, they're both founded on really strong defensive play and, and goaltending. And, uh, you know, th- this is a rematch of the 1970s Stanley Cup final uh, where the, the Blues, which was the last final the Blues were in, uh, and they played against Bobby Orr's Bruins. And, uh, you know, that iconic picture of Bobby Orr flying through the, the air, scoring the game-winning goal in game four uh, was from that series. And, you know, ultimately, I think this series is going to end up in the favor of the Bruins. I don't think it's going to be a sweep like that was. Um, and, and that the Blues, you know, up to this point in their franchise history are, are 0 and 12 in the finals. I think they'll finally get in the wing column. Uh, and we're probably looking at the seven game series, um, you know, as long as everyone stays healthy. I would imagine this would go seven games. Uh, you know, the, the two teams play twice in the regular season, which. <clears throat> I don't think it really helps predict how, how this is going to turn out, uh, primarily because, you know, Jordan Bennington only played in one of those games, uh, which was the game the Blues won back in February. Uh, and the Bruins won the first game in January. So they've split, they split the regular season matchup. Um, and, you know, I think up and down the, the roster, they're really, really similar. The, the uh, Bruins have played a little bit better throughout the playoffs. If you look just at their, their, Cross stat lines of the team. Uh, you know, the goals per game, Boston has a little over three, and St. Louis has three, are, are averaging three goals a game. Uh, so they're really even there. The goals against, you know, are really even. Boston's at 1.94, and St. Louis is at 2.5. Uh, and where I think this series is really going to be decided is on the power play penalty kill. Um, and in both those stat lines, Boston, again, is, is actually 
quite a bit better than San Luis. Boston is at averaging 34% uh, success on the power play, uh, where San Luis is only at 19%. And so if San Luis, you know, continues their hard-hitting ways and, and gets some penalties uh, throughout the series, Boston has shown that they can make teams pay. Um, whenever they get that opportunity. And Boston has been a better penalty killing team too. So when Brad Marchand, their their leading scorer on the team for Boston is also, you know, plays on the edge and is uh, a controversial figure and gets a lot of penalty minutes. You know, when he, when he takes a, a dumb penalty, Boston has been able to kill it off and they're killing off penalties at an 86% rate, uh, which is uh, quite a bit better. St. Louis is 78%. Um, so I think, you know, those, those stat lines kind of show us where, where the teams can match up and, and line up and where Boston has a little, little bit of an edge. At the end of the day, you know, it's, it's how they play in this series and not what they've done in the past. Um, I think Boston's experience with having some guys like Zane Ochara, uh, Krejci, um, Bergeron and Marshawn, who've all won cups before. Tuka Rask has won a cup. Uh, I think their experience is really going to show up in, in this series. Um, neither team is very quick, so I don't think the Blues are going to really be able to run them out and run them down um, like a fast-paced team, and say, like Colorado uh, might have been able to do. Uh, the fact that they're both kind of – they're kind of an old-school hockey from the last, you know, seven years or so, where it was, you know – a few highly skilled guys, but a lot of bigger guys that can do a lot of pounding in the corners and, and, you know, do a lot of damage to their team's star players in terms of hits, closing the gaps. So there's not a lot of room out there uh, and playing really defensive hockey. Both those te- both these teams play that way. So I think we're going to probably be in some w- very low scoring games. Uh, you know, it should be exciting with the hitting, uh, but it's not going to be the very High, high-paced, high-scoring uh, affair that we might have gotten in a different matchup. Um, so, you know, what what about the goaltending coming into this series, Ryan? Because uh, you mentioned, you know, the the Blues have been getting some really good goaltending, and as you know, sometimes that hot goaltender can be the difference maker, right? So, how, how do you view the goaltending matchup coming into the series? I mean, they're they're both the best two goalies uh, in the playoffs. So Tuukka Rask for the Bruins, um, he has a 12 and five record this postseason of a 9.42 save percentage and a, and a sub two goals against. He has 1.84, which you know anytime you're below two is you're among the elite in the league. Um, you know he, he I, I think he's probably the leader for the Con Smythe, which is the MVP. Uh, and if if the Blues can't figure out a way to get more than two past them in a game, uh, then it's, it's going to be a pretty quick series. Uh, Jordan Bennington, on their hand, is you know playing outstanding as well. He had a couple of rocky games in there, uh, which is why I give the the edge to Tuca in the matchup. Uh, Bennington is eleven and seven with a nine twelve save percentage uh, and a goal against of two forty four. So he it was a little bit of rocky. Uh, games, you know, hurt his goals against average. Um, but, you know, they're, they both have the ability to shut their team down. I mean, we could be looking at a couple of games going to overtime that are 0 0. Uh, that's how well these two goaltenders are playing. Hmm. And what about from um, a health standpoint, injury standpoint? Are there are there any any things of note there, or, or are both of these teams coming in? Um, you know, to the finals, relatively healthy, given, of course, it's at the end of the season and everybody's a bit banged up. Yeah, it, it appears, you know, hockey is notorious for how little they share in terms of injuries and having guys play through injuries or, you know, early in the playoffs, guys played through broken legs, broken hands, uh, torn ligaments in the knee. So just because they're on the ice doesn't mean they're, they're healthy. Um, Zane Ochara, he's 42 years old for uh, Boston. He missed the, the last game of uh, the Carolina series with an injury. He's had 10, 10 
uh, plus days to rest. So what I've heard that he's, he's going to be ready to go in game one. Um, you know, I haven't really heard of any top or major injuries for the blues. I'm sure the guys are, are dealing with some things, but you know, the, the blues top players are, are playing like they're not injured and, and playing some of the best hockey they've played all season. Uh, so, so going into it, it looks like we're going to have two fairly healthy teams, uh, which is, you know, all you can really ask for. It would, it would be a shame if one team was super injured coming in at this point. And so you, you see Boston prevailing in the series and, but St. Louis getting off to snide in actually winning a, a, a finals game. Do you see them winning more games, uh, more than one game? Uh, how long do you see this series going? Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be, I think every game is going to be very close, uh, highly contested. And as long as there's, you know, no weird controversies, um, I see this game to a, a game seven. I wouldn't really be surprised if this actually goes to an overtime in game seven. Um, you know, I, I took a look at the, the players up and down the, the lineup and, and the top, the top lines, you know, are performing pretty similarly. Um, they're both, they're both producing, they're getting secondary scoring, their defense is, you know, playing unreal. They have two, they have like the, the two best goaltenders in the playoffs. Uh, so it's probably going to come down to some of the depth guys, the third and fourth line guys. Uh, and in Boston, you know, they made some moves at the, at the deadline that I think gave them an extra edge in this series in terms of depth um, and just their experience. You know, I, I always hate, when people lean on experience to depict uh, a series, but when they're, when the teams are so close and one team has never been there, uh, you know, the blues, I think only one player has ever played in the finals and that that's Perron. He was actually on Vegas last year. So he, he played in the final last year. Uh, and the, and the Bruins have multiple players that have gone there uh, and five that have gone there twice with, with uh, Boston. So I, I just think, that experience, the, the fact that they're so evenly matched and Boston has home ice advantage, um, you know, I, I give the edge just to Boston, but it, it's going to be a really close, close series. And then, Ryan, what about the star power, the sex appeal of this series, um, you know, from the league perspective? I mean, is this the type of matchup that, is going to compel people to to tune in, and, I, and I'm not talking about the rabbit hockey fans, right? Who are going to, um, you know, make sure that that they take in the series, but you know, in terms of growing the game, expanding the game, increasing interest, is this the kind of matchup you think the league um, feels will help them do that? Um, are there some interesting storylines here? I mean, um, is there any sizzle here in this series? Yeah, I mean, I think every time a Boston team is in a championship, which happens, it seems like every 90 days or so. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I, I, think, right. I think there's a lot of media attention on, on that market, and I, I think a lot of people have become Boston fans, fans of all Boston teams, just because there's – traditionally in, in these positions to win the championship. So having, you know, Boston in there, I think definitely helps. I think if it was Carolina, St. Louis, the league would be a little concerned uh, just because it's two non primary hockey markets. St. Louis has been around, you know, since the, the initial expansion of, of the NHL back in the seventies, uh, but they've never won a cup and they, they haven't really been an elite team for the last number of years. But they probably are the best story in hockey. Uh, you know, they have this rookie goaltender that comes in when the team is the worst in the league, and all of a sudden they, they become the best team in the league from January on. Uh, you know, they get to the finals. They're playing really better than anyone really thought they could play. They have some superstar uh, players. They have Vladimir Tarasenko, uh, who's one of the one of the best Russians in the league. You know, it's always helpful for the league to have some European superstars because it's, it's, it's really a world international game. Um, you know, around 30% of the players in the league are from Europe or, or Russia. 
And so a lot of the fan bases actually will actually tune in from those countries. So having, you know, Tarasenko on, on the Blues and having David Pasternak from the Czech Republic on, on the Bruins, who are two superstars, uh, you know, I think helps grow the game internationally. And then St. Louis, you know, it, it's a market that um, the, when the Blues were winning cups, or uh, not winning cups, but getting to the finals and uh, the conference finals and, and playing really well back in the 90s, uh, when then they had Brett Hull and, uh, you know, it really turned the St. Louis youth hockey into a top bed of American hockey. Uh, and so there's there's actually St. Louis natives that are on the Blues uh, right now playing for the for the team. And, you know, it, it's a lot of the NHL, a lot of NHL stars that are American have come out of St. Louis and having them perform well, I think is, you know, will help grow, further grow the, the, the youth game in Missouri and the Midwest. Um, you know, ultimately, I think the, the league would have rather a, another major market on a coast get in there just so that the media frenzy gets higher. Um, but in, in terms of a pure storyline of, you know, the underdog uh, outperforming everyone's expectations, I think the Blues are that team. Uh, the Bruins, you know, they're, they're the highest ranked team. Um, you know, they were the highest ranked team in the second round remaining in, in the East. Uh, so they're, they're, you know, one of the last established teams um, from the, from the last you know, seven years that have really been an elite team. Um, and they have, you know, a lot of superstars on that team. And I think there's a lot of media frenzy around Boston in general. But, I, I you know, I think I think the league is going to be pretty happy with this this matchup and the attention it gets and, and the storylines that come out of it. I think it's going to be fun to watch. Well, that's good to hear. And I'm sure the league is – you know, please at that. I mean, because for me, from my standpoint, you know, even though I'm not um, a huge hockey fan, you know, just, uh, you know, I do have an interest in seeing, you know, hockey and baseball, basketball, football, WNBA and other sports just continue to expand and, and to grow. Um, I think it's good for the players. I think it's good for the leagues. And, and most of all, it's, it's good for the fans. So um, hopefully the, it will be a good matchup. Hopefully you'll be right, Ryan, that it will be a seven game series, um, an exciting series. And, um, you know, we, we look forward to, to seeing it all unfold. But, um, and listen, man, I want to thank you again. Um, we, you know, we've, we've gone through each of these rounds, including, the podcast no one will ever hear but um you know it's it's been fun man and and uh we'll see how this plays out and and obviously we'll come back too as as we go on into the summer and get into all kinds of things um because the off season in every sport is is always a busy time and i'm sure it's no different in hockey and so as um, those storylines develop we'll be sure to uh have you back on and and visit with you again but for right now thanks ryan for coming on and talking about the finals which kicks off you know it's funny i always use mixed metaphors the hockey finals doesn't kick off right it just starts (laughs) they're gonna if they face off on monday uh in game one between the boston bruins and st louis Bruins. but thank you thank you ryan for taking the time to come on and we'll catch up soon yeah, and, and Jeff, before we go, I just uh, – do you have a team that you think is going to win? Yeah, you know, you, you had to go there, right? Because – and see, now we're, we're going to go back to what you did to me uh, before we got started today. You told me, I had, you know, hey, it's, you have a 50-50 chance. And I almost went and I said, yeah, Ryan, you're right. But then I thought that's always the case. So – but here's the thing. Uh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with the Blues to upset the Bruins. That would really be a good storyline because, as you said, you know, Boston, you know, just being a Boston team and an iconic franchise and all the rest of that, right, that draw, that draws the interest. But, you know, you, you mentioned something interesting. 
And that's the Blues getting to the finals, but not even winning a game as of yet. And I think it would be absolutely great if the Blues not only won a game, but won the actual series and came away with the cup. So um, whether it's a prediction or not, I don't know. But I will say this. I'm rooting for the Blues to win the cup. That's my prediction, Ryan. <laughs> you know, they've, they've proven everyone wrong so far. So that. You know, you're probably smarter than I am. <laughs> and I didn't offer one stack but <laughs> 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 to back it up. But yeah, I'm rooting for the blues. I think it would be a, I, I think it would be a cool story for them to win. Um, you know, to to come away with their first cup. So I think that would be great. So we'll see. But thanks Should again, be- Ryan. Yeah, it will be exciting. I mean, we're, we're going to check it out and see how it unfolds. But uh, but again, man, uh, thanks again, Ryan, for coming on and and, and sharing your knowledge on uh, the National Hockey League playoffs. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jeff. It's always fun to talk hockey. No question. Talk to you soon, all right? All right. Take care. 